close off this week in a really special way today. So today, our special guest has been involved in local church ministry his entire adult life. He and his wife, Brooke, have eight children together. They're passionate about family, adoption, and loving people. They're currently living in Meridian, Mississippi. They have a book coming out in June called Every Little Win, How Celebrating Small Victories Can Lead to Big Joy. Many of us watched him as he competed on season 18 of The Voice, and we were thrilled as he was crowned the winner. He's working on his debut album release with the first song to be dropped on Valentine's Day. Lee University, if you would please stand to your feet and help me welcome to Lee University, Todd Tillman.
Somebody would just open your mouth just for a minute and say, Lord, we love you. We welcome you into this place and we say, Father, have your way. Let your spirit move. Make us your very own. Make us your very own. You've given us cause to celebrate. <laughs> oh, come on. I wish somebody would say, You brought me from death to life. You brought me from death to life and gave me cause to celebrate.
Y'all good out there? Woo! It's hard for me to hear you with these things in my ear. Hey! Nobody yell free bird, all right? <laughs> Man, it is so wonderful to be here. I'm going to do one more song here in just a second, and then I want to share uh, just a little bit of scripture with y'all. But before I do that, I just want to say to y'all, uh, most of you, I don't know, I think a couple of you I do actually, but I want to say to y'all the same thing I say to everybody. You know, I was, I was funny, I was telling these guys, uh, I told y'all I'd forget the words, and I did, so I'm sorry. I'm old, man. I write songs now, and I can't even remember the words. And I wrote the words. But uh, I just want to say I love y'all, man. I just love y'all so much, and I appreciate you being here this morning. I appreciate you being part of the kingdom of God. Um, I appreciate more and more uh, the diversity that I see in the kingdom of God. And I know that you guys are going to play such a huge part in that in the future. Um, how God is spreading the gospel message throughout the world in unique ways and in ways that not everybody would understand. But I want to just say thank you to you for that. And um, we're going to sing a couple more songs. I'm going to sing one right now and that I know you all know. And uh, then I want to just share a little scripture with you after that. And then we'll, uh, we'll close out with a final song. a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I'll sing it if you know it. I raise a hallelujah. Come on. Louder than the unbeat me. I raise, I raise a hallelujah. Sing it, y'all, my weapon, my weapon. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Now sing with me. I'm gonna sing in the middle. 
Hey. Woo, come on, somebody clap your hands right now and give God some glory. Give him glory because he's worth glory. I'll tell you what I used to tell my church all the time when we were in worship because you can sit down for a minute. Here. Man, I was a, I pastored a church for a lot of years, but I was a worship leader pretty much that whole time. I took a couple of breaks, but they pass it off and then they pass it back. So uh, I always said in worship to them the same thing that I'll say to you guys in worship, which is I was asked years and years ago, after kind of a particularly tough circumstance in my life, how you do it, you know? And it's so funny to me because I never, I never really looked at worship um, in terms of how I do it when I'm going through tough times, but I did very often look at worship in terms of how I'm able to do it in a time in my life where maybe I've failed or fallen short. And so there just came this time in my life, you know, I don't know what you call it, some people might call it an epiphany, I've never heard like the audible voice of God. Now, I've heard the audible voice of God coming through somebody else's mouth, sometimes just telling me they love me, you know, when they know that I'm breaking or weak. And, but in that moment, I'll, I'll never forget the Lord sharing with my heart that if you can't worship, you know, when times are hard, when you're going through a season of defeat or struggle, or even a season of personal failure, if you can't worship, then you were worshiping yourself all along anyway, you know? If you worship God for who he says he is, then we start to learn that our worship is not about how worthy we are. It's about how worthy he is. And he is always, always, always worthy. Now, I just want to say, I'm going to take one of these out so, because I know y'all are just hollering amen and I can't even hear it, you know? I can tell this is, you know, I'm, I grew up in old school church of God, so y'all try not to go running. I don't know if you're allowed to run the aisles in COVID. Um, so just do it in your spirit or in your heart. Uh, I do want to share a little bit of scripture with y'all. You know, a lot of people have a lot of um, a lot of ideas about all of this, and I'm trying to find my scripture where I put it. Here it is. A lot of people have a lot of ideas and notions, and they were asking me earlier if I was going to share anything about about the voice. Um, you know what I think is, I've, I've I've said this to my wife a million times. I think that. God had me in a season of transition in my life and there was like one chapter was changing into the next chapter but God knows me just like he knows you the scripture says the hairs on our head are numbered he knows us intimately and deeply and so I've told a thousand people especially my wife I've told her this a hundred times that I feel like God loved me enough to give me the grand gesture that he knew I needed if I was going to move forward in anything because I'm a play it safe kind of guy so I want to read some scripture to you. I'm, I'm going to be wrapping up here in just a second. In Psalm 139, um, I'm going to start in uh, I'm going to start in verse 14. It says, "I'm I'll praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance, and being yet unformed." And in your book, they all were written, the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God, and how great is the sum of them. Now, I read that scripture to say this when people ask me questions about the voice. Number one, I'll tell you, the voice to me was a, a grand gesture from God that he knew I needed. Um, but it's also a place where I've set up a memorial in my life, and I'm just kind of like the Israelites did at the Red Sea or at the River Jordan. You set up a memorial there, but you don't live there because that's not the promised land, you know. He's got other things waiting. And so, but when, when I was in that, when I was in that season of my life and I was in that process, and I hope I can encourage y'all with this just for a minute, when I would struggle, because it's, you know, I don't really know why, but even now, y'all, this is one thing that I'll tell you. Maybe this will help you. You guys, I would say the vast majority, of, unless you're faculty, you're, you're students, and you got your whole life ahead of you. And the thing about life, if you're not careful, it can be real, real scary. You know, that's how this was for me. I'm terrified even now. This, I'm in a whole new chapter of my life and scared to death. And so in this time, I was so scared, man, And uh, in my season on, on the show. And I was so, so scared. And in my prayer time... I would always say the same thing to God. 
as if he didn't already know it, but you know, we're people, and, and the scripture does tell us we can remind him what he said, you know? So in my prayer time, I would always say to God, it's already written. It's a, whatever it's supposed to be, it's already written. And my wife, who is, you know, I always tell people my wife, if I can describe my wife to you, I would describe her like this. She's kind of like a, a rose. She's beautiful and lovely to behold, but there's also, man, those thorns are like right in my side, you know, all the time, you know. But she would always say that same thing to me. She would say, Todd, don't worry. Stop being nervous. It's already written. It's already written. So when you read through that passage of Scripture, what I want you to know about your life is, number one, if you feel like God's asking you to do something crazy, maybe he is, you know, and do it. You never know what might happen. God knows I never thought. I, as a matter of fact, in the moment where they announced the winner, they, they went to commercial break, and I told all of our kids, when they announced the winner, please, y'all, don't embarrass me and don't cry on, the, on camera. Just smile and clap for the winner, and then they'll take us right off the screen, you know, and then you can cry and fall out the floor and whatever all the kids do. You know, but the scripture tells us, number one, God knew what he was doing when he made you. He purposely, purposefully made you. If you read these scriptures, one right after the other, the scripture is saying that he purposefully made you and he purposefully and skillfully made you for a story that's already written. And then ultimately at the end, that story is good. It's a good story. And so if I could leave you with anything, I want you to be encouraged. I don't know what you feel like. If You know, some of you, I got, you know, I got a bunch of kids, so I got a little bit of every kind. Some of my kids, man, are totally fearless, but other ones are really cautious like I am. And so, especially if you fall into that category like me, it's easy to be so afraid that you don't take a step. But just remember, it's already written. God already wrote your story, and he made you for that story. And that story's good. Now, if you just want to get up on your feet one more time, we're going to sing one more song. Then I'm going to pray and I'll, I'll be finished. <laughs> just close your eyes, if you will. I think it helps you just to sort of get along with God when you close your eyes and worship. And when we sing this song, I just want you to remember that he's got you in the palm of his hand. He's your daddy. The scripture says, I have not given you a spirit of bondage again to fear, but I've given you a spirit of adoption. And by that spirit, you can call me Abba Father, which literally translates into daddy. We can call him our daddy. Mm -hmm. More real than ground I'm standing on. You're more real than, than the wind in my lungs. Let's worship it. Your thoughts define me. You're inside me. You're my reality.
Father, you're good. You are good and your mercy endures. You are good and your mercy endures forever. From generation to generation, you are good. You are good. You are good and we sing. Sing of your goodness. Father, I just pray that you would speak to our hearts. I pray that you spoke to our hearts while we were here today and in this week of convocation, Lord, that you've been speaking to hearts. I pray that you would strengthen us from the inside out by the Spirit of God, Lord, to realize that you are equipping us now. Even today, you're equipping us for the things that you called us to do. And it's not so much that you have a plan for my life as it is that you have a great plan and my life is part of that plan. And so I pray, Father, that we would just follow you. Wherever you lead us, we'll follow you. And that the world would be changed because of the love of Jesus through the people of Jesus. And we pray these things all in the name of Jesus. And everybody say with me, amen. Thank you all so much for coming. Hey, I love you all. Hopefully I can come back again soon and remember all the lyrics next time. Todd, thank you so much. Um, we've had a great week of convocation, and this whole week we've been talking about what it means to be a resilient follower of Jesus Christ. And uh, this message, these songs today, certainly echo that same sentiment. And part of becoming a resilient follower of Jesus is understanding that the story is already written, that your story is good, that God has a purpose for your life, he's got a plan for your life, and it's a beautiful story. It's not a story without hiccups. It's not a story without failure. It's not a story without challenges or obstacles, but it is God's story for your life. And when we lean into him and we, we love him and we learn what it means to follow him resiliently, that story becomes something bigger than us. It becomes a story like Todd's where we have unique opportunities to touch a world in a different way. Each one of you are created differently and I've said this so many different times but there will only ever be one you in all of human history. Only one you. That's how important you are. That's how much you matter to God. That he only saw fit to create one you. Our job now is to be resilient for him, to go out into this world, to share his love, to let people see his story in us because it's a beautifully written story, amen? We're so thankful that we've had this opportunity this week to hear so many powerful messages from so many different people, and thank you so much for being attentive and engaged, and uh, we're gonna pray our college benediction together. And not sure, but Todd, yeah, he may be coming back out if you wanna say hi or whatever. Uh, I think he's gonna be here, just try to keep the social distancing space uh, as best you can. But uh, let's pray our college benediction together and ask God to add his blessings to this day. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you guys. The ushers will release you. Your code is on the screen.